Hello and welcome to Weekend Projects. I'm Bree Pettis and every week I bring a project that you can make over the weekend. This weekend, I'm going to teach you how to get started in electronics on a breadboard. This is a great way to mess around with stuff because you can go and put parts in, test things out, and you don't have to solder it all together. And if it doesn't work, you can just rip it all out. As a kid, I got started in electronics with a 201 kit like this. I recently got this one off eBay. The way it works is you go ahead and you uh, put wires into the springs and then you connect up all the electronics parts to make little projects. I've made a little uh, sound buzzer here. The first thing I'm going to think about is power. I've got this wall warp which will take AC current from the wall and turn into direct current, DC current, which is what's going to power my project here. Now the problem is, is that this will put out 12 volts and actually I hooked up my multimeter and it was actually closer to 18 volts. That's way too much. My projects that I'm going to work on are generally in the 5 to 6 volt range and so I need to regulate that and so I'm going to get a regulator. There's a few things you need to know about regulators. First are the pins. You've got an input, a ground, and an output. You can remember that by remembering I go. Input, ground, output. Then you've also got a heat sink up here which also works as a ground. Now a regulator takes a bunch of voltage and then turns it into a certain amount of voltage. In this case, 5 volts which is what we need. SparkFun has put together a really awesome little circuit for power to your breadboard. Starts off here with the power from the wall wart and then I've got a switch to turn it on and off. A diode right here which works as a one-way street for electrons. And then I've got the regulator right here and some capacitors around it. The capacitors work to even out the current. Then I've got a little LED and a resistor. The resistor is so that when I turn the power on the, the LED doesn't blow out because it only works with like two or three volts instead of five and uh, then that provides power down the side here and all around the edge. Then I can put all my components in the middle and I'm all set to start building stuff. Let's turn this thing on and see if the LED goes on. Yep. Okay, now I've got power to my breadboard. Let's put something together. In Make Volume 11 there's a really great article by Charles Platt all about the 555 timer chip. There's some really great schematics here to get you into electronics and I got all the components and I'm going to put them together on the breadboard. This is really cool, and I'll go ahead and put this in the PDF that goes along with this podcast. So you can go ahead and have this, get all your equipment, and do this yourself at home. We're going to make a timed buzzer, so when you play games like chess or Scrabble, you can go ahead and have a time limit on how long each player gets to their turn. Let's start with stage one, a blinking light. Okay, so what's happening here is power is flowing through the resistors and filling up the capacitors. The timer chip is noticing when they're full, and then when they're full, switching them so that they release their energy. Then they go out and they light up the LED. And this just happens over and over and over and over and over again so that the LED flashes. Moving on to stage two of this circuit. I switched out the capacitor and the resistor so that the LED would flash at a lot faster rate. Except that then I took the LED out and put in a teeny tiny little speaker here. Now when I push the button and switch it on, I've got a little groaning noise. Moving on to stage three. Okay, now I've added another 555 timer and I've put it in mono stable mode. And what that means is when I trigger it with this button, it's just going to go once. And I've also added another capacitor so that it goes, so that it slows down at the end. So listen. For those of you who haven't done electronics, you're probably like going, what is all this stuff he's talking about right now? So let's take a quick little learning break. First of all, the awesome thing is that these little schematics actually are like little maps that show you where things go. And once you know what the symbols mean, it's really easy to figure out what connects to what. If electricity can be thought of as water running through a hose, a resistor is like putting a big kink in that hose. It slows down the flow. This is a symbol for a diode. It makes sure that the electricity only goes this way. It's a one-way street. This is a symbol for a capacitor. A capacitor is like a bucket for electricity. It fills up and when it's done, it dumps it out. Now that you're armed with the vocabulary and the map, you're not going to have any problems putting this project together. Stage 4 is setting up a delay. In this delay section of the circuit, I've added a push button switch to restart everything and a potentiometer. A potentiometer is a variable resistor so that it can vary the time I have to wait for the next person to have their turn. Okay, here we go. It's your turn. Now it's my turn. Alright, now you can see how easy it is to make a circuit on a breadboard. You can do this. Go ahead and take a picture of anything you put together and, and put it up on the Make Flickr pool. I want to see the circuits that you create. Now, you're, when you're done with this, you can either solder it all up on a circuit board or you can just leave it on the breadboard and use it as is. Okay, go out there, play with some electronics, have a great weekend.